Hi, this is Michelle here at AppWorks, and today we'll be talking more about the data viewer and also the script debugger. Both are extremely useful when writing and debugging scripts or calculations and are really easy to learn and use. The data viewer and the script debugger are both part of FileMaker's built-in developer tools. So prior to FileMaker version 17, you will need a copy of FileMaker Pro Advanced in order to use them. If you have a copy of FileMaker 17 or later, you can simply turn on these developer tools in your settings. For instructions on how to enable the developer tools, check out our other video titled FileMaker Basics Lesson 1, the Data Viewer's Watch tab. Once you've enabled the developer tools, you should see Tools as an option here in the top menu. This is where you'll find the Script Debugger and the Data Viewer. We'll start by opening the Data Viewer, and you'll notice there are two tabs at the top, Current and Watch. For information about the Watch tab, check out our other video titled FileMaker Basics Lesson 1, the Data Viewer's Watch tab. The current tab will show you fields and variables that are in use by a script while it's currently running. Because of this, the current tab will likely and usually be empty unless you are currently running a script through the Descript Debugger, which allows you to step through scripts line by line. Sometimes you will see global variables here, which are variables with the double dollar sign, since they are independent of scripts. We'll be using this today as we run a script through the script debugger. So first, let's find a script that we want to debug in our script workspace. We'll close the data viewer for now. To open your script workspace, go to scripts in the top menu and click script workspace. Recently, I've made some changes to this script titled task.addRelatedRecord, and I'd like to test it to make sure it works, so we'll run this one through the debugger. Before we run this through the debugger, let me quickly explain what will happen when we do. I have a task here that needs an additional assignee to it, which we can do by clicking this Add Assignee button. When this script is run, a window will open up with a list of assignees that are currently in our database to choose from. This is our current list of assignees, one of which has already been assigned to that particular task. So what's nice about this script is it will automatically omit anyone who's already been assigned. In addition to this, I would also like to omit people who are not currently active within the organization, which at this point would be our app tester assignee. So if all goes well, we should be left with a list of assignees who are current and not currently assigned to the task, which would be Jennifer Johnson and John Smith. So let's head back to our task detail so we can begin the process of debugging our script. To debug this script, we can access the script debugger two different ways. First, you can start the script directly from the script workspace by clicking this bug icon right here. This is pretty convenient for most scripts, as long as it's not reliant on script parameters being passed in via a button or script debugger. In that case, you can use the second option by opening the script debugger from the tools menu. Once it's open, you can simply click the button needed to trigger the script or take any other action necessary that will activate a script trigger. Once you've done this, the script will automatically be opened within the script debugger. Before we begin our script, let's go over the different controls you can use to debug them. First up is the Edit Script button. Once a script is currently running, you can click this to open it up in the script workspace where you can then make changes. Once you save those changes, the script will automatically halt here in the script debugger. Next, you have the Run button. And this will basically run your script through all the way to the end or until a breakpoint is encountered. 
the stop button will halt the script at any point. The step over control will execute the script one step at a time without entering subscripts. If the script step is a performed script, that means the script debugger will execute the subscript, but it will just proceed to the next line of the calling script. The step over control is very similar in that it will also execute the script one step at a time, but it will also enter and show steps in subscripts. Step out will execute all script steps in the current script, and if the script is a subscript, it'll return to the line right after the perform script step in the calling script. If the script is not a subscript, the step out command will cause the script debugger to execute all remaining scripts and subscripts until it encounters a breakpoint. The set next step control allows you to manually select a script step in the currently running script and set it as the next script step to be processed. So clicking this will not make that script step run. You will still need to use one of these other controls to actually execute it, but it will set it as the next one to run and will skip any script steps in between what had been the current running script step and what you just assigned as the next one. The enable or disable script triggers button allows you to temporarily disable or enable all script triggers in a file. When it's highlighted in blue here, you can see that it is currently enabled. If I were to select it again, it would be disabled. Last but not least is the data viewer button that will open the data viewer for us. A couple more things to mention about the script debugger. It has a pause on error checkbox that will pause scripts when errors are encountered. This works even when the script debugger is closed. It will automatically open it when an error is encountered. Down here, you'll find the call stack, which will be a list of all scripts set to run. You can select a script in the call stack list to view that script's steps in the display area. Now that we know how to use the controls, let's go ahead and start our script to test them out. We'll start by clicking the Add Assignee button. As you can see, we now have our first script added to our call stack and we can see that it is calling the correct script task.addRelatedRecord and that no parameters were passed in. So to continue, I'm going to click the step into control. Also, let's go ahead and open up our data viewer so that we can watch what's happening as we go through the script. You'll notice there are a few fields that are showing up in our current tab. These are the fields that are being used in the script that's currently running. To continue, we'll click the step into step and we can see that the parent primary key, which was supposed to take on the value of the tasks primary key, happened correctly. And we now have a list of related keys. And another variable has been set to count the number of related records. Looks like there's only one. Behind the data viewer here, that window that I mentioned earlier has opened. And by default, it's showing all of the people in our assignee table, including somebody, App Tester, John Smith, and Jennifer Johnson. As we continue through the script, we should eventually get down to a found set of just John Smith and Jennifer Johnson. The script will enter find mode and it's going to start a loop. Because we only have one related record, we should only have to loop through this once. Basically, the script is doing a find for any current assignee 
of the task, and this will eventually be omitted from our found set. We'll continue going, and now that we've reached the end of our loop, we can scroll down. We can see that it's about to perform the additional script steps that I've added. I'm also going to set the assignees active field to be null so that when we perform find we are in a found set of the person who is not active and the person who's already assigned. As we click step into it will now show only the omitted records giving us the exact found set we wanted. The next script step is perform script. Now, if I wanted to step into the subscript, we could choose the step into control, uh, but instead, I think I'll just let it run and we'll click step over to be taken to the next line. But as you can see in the background here, it looks like that sort did happen successfully. We'll exit our script now and it looks like it was a success. Well, I think that covers the data viewer's current tab for today, as well as the script debugger. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.